right, so, oh gosh, I look like Oompa Loompa. It made me purple. <laughs> you should see it in the camp. Can you see it? Yes. Don't I look like it? Yeah. Oompa Loompa Loompa I bet you there is not a church tonight singing Oompa Loompa for their Christmas Eve service. All right, we know some of you couldn't make it to church tonight, and so we want to say two very precious words to you. One, two, three. Merry Christmas! And from this Oompa Loompa to you, have a merry, very merry Christmas. We love you guys. Thanks. Merry Christmas. Much better. It's good to see you guys tonight. You know... You and I all, and we have different memories of Christmas. And when you watch those different movies, some of you remember watching some of those when you were children. Um, I know for Jerry, some of those didn't come out until you were like in your 30s. But, um, you know, other people, you were kids when those first came out. But um, you guys are like, who's Jerry? Anyway, but tonight I want to talk about something very simple and um Several people in first service said that they really needed this message this year. Um, because if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of anger right now. And there's a lot of hatred and, and people being mean to each other. And, and people sit behind a computer screen and say mean things. I'm, I mean, all you have to do on Facebook is just put that you're going on a diet. And people will comment that you are fat. And all kind of other things... Um, and if, you, and if you really want to make a mistake, put on there some specific diet you're going on and watch the reactions of people. Like, make, if you want to have fun, make one up. Go ahead and go on, going on the pineapple diet. All I'm going to eat is pineapple. And people will lose their minds and tell you you're going to die today. And, uh, and then don't even try to talk politics. Let's not even get there, right? So, so here's the deal. Can I tell you a secret? Jesus came to bring peace. And regardless of what happens in the world tonight, I want you to know something. He can give you his peace. So tonight's message is how to get the peace of God in your life. Now, the word peace in the Greek is this really cool word. And, of course, you've heard it in the Hebrew, shalom. Um, and, um, and, of course, you know, I have some friends who actually are living in Jerusalem right now. And um, they actually put a, put a thing with the word shalom in it today. And... Um, and, of course, Hanukkah started, uh, I believe, today. And uh, tomorrow morning, by the way, I'm going to talk about um, what Jesus said during Hanukkah. We know specifically one of the things. So I'm going to talk about the shepherds tomorrow and what Jesus said. But anyway, tonight I want to talk about how to get the peace of God. And this idea of peace is this really cool idea because here's what it means. The word peace literally in the Greek is the idea of something that's in pieces. And when God comes, and when Christ came into the world, it's the idea that he puts the pieces back together. Now, I don't know your life. I, I, I don't know your story. But I know that everyone here has a story. And I could almost bet that something in your life went to pieces this year. Some area of your life, whether it was relational or physical, or an emotional area of your life, or maybe it has to do with a relationship with someone else, and it just went to pieces all of a sudden, and you don't know what to do about it. The awesome thing about this word peace is it's the idea that in the middle of all of that, God can bring those things back together. There's over 790 verses in the Bible that talk about peace, so it's important to God, and when we talk about peace, tonight we're going to talk about spiritual peace, having that peace with God. We're going to talk about emotional peace. And we're going to talk about relational peace, having peace with other people. But I want to talk about the first one first. But first, we're going to give the main verse from the Christmas story. We already had the Christmas story brought to you by children. Wasn't that a great video tonight? So that was, that's a riot. And, and by the way, some of you think that that's really accurate. So you really should read your Bible, Luke chapter 2, later when you get home. But I want to read one verse in Luke chapter 2 and just talk about one verse tonight. Because you don't have time to listen to all the verses and you wouldn't listen to me do them all anyway. And hopefully you know the story. If not, you can go to Luke chapter 2 when you get home and, um, and read that. That's a great story to read. But Luke chapter 2, 14 is when the angels came to the shepherds. And listen to what they said. And then I'm going to explain it to you. They said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. To men, and that's the idea of men and women, mankind, on whom his favor 
rest. So we're going to leave this up here for just a minute. I'm going to explain a couple things to you. First of all, this word glory, it's where we get the word doxology. Um, if you go to a Christian service, they have a doxology. And the idea of doxology is the idea to give honor to someone. It's the idea where we get the idea of worship. All worship starts with you and I being humble. And you and I recognizing that we can't do it on our own. You and I recognizing that we don't have it all together, that we're broken, that we're messed up. But we have a God who loves us and it humbles us to know, God, you love me. And he absolutely loves you. So they said, glory to God in the highest. That's the idea of he's above you. He's beyond. He knows answers to questions that you don't know the answers to. He knows, he knows the answers to the universe. He knows the answers to what's next. He knows what happens tomorrow. And you can trust an unseen future to a God who loves you. And then it says on earth, this idea of peace. The idea of peace here, once again, is the idea of putting back together. Jesus said that he came to bind up our wounds. I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people who need that. I know people whose hearts are broken. I know people whose lives are broken, who, who've gotten into addictions, who've gotten into difficulties, who've made really bad choices, and their lives are broken, and they need peace from the pieces. And that's what God does. And then finally it says, on whom his favor rests. And this is a really cool word. Most of you know when Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water, and God spoke from heaven and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. This word in the Greek right here where, where the angels say, they're talking about humans, and they say, and God is well pleased. And what it means is this. God didn't just send his son because he felt like he had to or because of some other reason. God sent his son, and he was well pleased to send his son. He was glad to do it. Now, I want you to let that sink in for a minute. Some of you have this relationship with God where you feel like God puts up with you. Where you feel like God from heaven is all the time going like this. Right? Now, I do think that God laughs sometimes at the things we do. And I think he calls the angels over and says, look, look, look. I took the air out tonight. Watch what they do. It's going to be great. Actually, I think that was Satan, but that's another story. Anyway, so, <laughs> so, so a lot of us feel like, you know, God just puts up with us. But right here when the angels came, you know what they said? They said God was well pleased. It means he was excited to bring his peace. Have you ever really thought about that? So I want to look at these three things tonight. Number one, we need peace with God. The key to peace with God is twofold. First of all, it's humility. Realizing that you can't bring peace on your own. You're terrible at it. You're awful at it. Some of you right now, you're looking at me. You know, Jack back here. Jack looks grumpy no matter what you do with him. You just think he's upset. And he's the nicest guy. But if you didn't know him, you'd look at him and you'd go, is he mad about something? Does anybody know what's the matter? Did you do something wrong, right? And others of you, I know you. You smile at me and you nod and you're thinking, what a doofus, right? Or even worse, you're smiling on the outside, but you're really struggling you're really hurting. You don't have any peace. You're like a duck. You know, above water, you look great, but you're just paddling. And right now, your brain, you have a hard time even focusing because you have no peace. So here's the first way to get peace, to get peace with God. And here's what it is. You ready? It's not based on what you do. It's based on what he did. The difference between Christianity and every other religion started in Bethlehem. It actually started before Bethlehem with Abraham. But in Bethlehem, that's where God said, I'm not waiting for you to try to make it to me. I'm not waiting for you to light enough candles or to say enough prayers or to, or to say just the right words or to get everything down just right. I'm sending Jesus to you. And not only that, the first people in this passage in Luke chapter 2, the first people I'm going to have visit are shepherds. Let me tell you a couple things about shepherds. Shepherds could not go to church. They were not welcome in the temple. They were seen as unclean. Not only that, shepherds were considered so bad that they would not let them testify in court because they were considered liars. And God says, so who do I want to invite to Jesus' birth? Let's send the angels and bring the least. 
Let's bring the people who other people think are worthless. Let's bring the most broken people, people who can't go to church. Let's bring church to them. The God that you serve wants a relationship with you so bad that he sent Jesus to know you. That's the reason Jesus died for you, because you couldn't be righteous enough. You can't do enough good things. You'll never get it right. Do you ever feel like, I'll never get it right? You're right. And the good news is Bethlehem means that you don't have to get it right. He got it right for you. And when you surrender to him, he brings you peace. But you have to humble yourself. And you have to say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I know I'm broken. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm messed up. I know that you came. You were born of a virgin. You died on a cross. You rose again to take my sin because I am broken and I can't do it on my own. And then you have to say, I surrender myself to you. That's the first step to having peace with God. It's not about what you do. It's about you giving up and saying, God, I can't do it. I'm broken. I'm messed up. I can't earn my way to you. And you came to me. Number two, you and I need peace with ourselves. Emotional peace. You know, when I talked about it a minute ago, some of you are come to church and you go to and you visited churches, and these churches look like it's a small world. You walk in and it looks like everybody's happy because they all look like this. Hi, brother. Hi, sister. How are you? By the way, I like brother and sister, because if you forget somebody's name, you can just fake it. Hey, brother. I have no idea what your name is. Brother, what's your name, right? What's my name, brother? But they look like this. And you ask them, how you doing? They go, I'm blessed. Because I don't want to tell you what my life's really like right now. I don't want to tell you what happened 10 months ago. I don't want to tell you about the fight I got with this lady next to me who's also looking like this. On the way here, we were yelling at each other, but now we're standing next to each other and pretending everything's okay. Hey, brother. Hey, sister. Who's your guts? I love you. It's just great. I, you're a jerk. I just think you're... Yeah, we're going to kill those kids when we get home, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to... Okay, yeah. It's good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Did you dress them? Right? And we pretend and we put on masks when on the inside so often we don't have peace. God wants to give you peace. He has peace for every problem you have. But listen, somebody sent me a video of this year and it's, it's your year. Somebody said to me, this is your year. So we videotaped several of you and we put it together and we made it into one video. And this is the video that we have of your year. It's a summary of your year 2016 and go. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, any of you feel that way this year? Anybody here? Anybody have that day today, right? So a lot of people, when I've talked to a lot of people this year, and they say, this year has just been crazy. It just seems like one thing after another. I just get over one thing and something else happened. Can I tell you something? No matter what's happening in your life right now, God can give you peace. No matter what your circumstances are, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter who's mad at you, no matter what's happening in your job, no matter what's happening in your finances, no matter what's happening to you physically, he can give you peace in the middle of struggle. Jesus even said, in this world, you will have trouble. He didn't say you might. He didn't say you could. He said you will have trouble. But then he said, but don't worry. I've overcome the world. And he has. Number three. Finally, don't worry, those of you who are fanning. Not far to go now. Peace with others. Let me tell you the key to peace with other people. You ready? It's humility. If you want to start a fight, bring pride in. And it's funny, when I meet with couples, I always say, uh, you know, the, the thing that causes uh, fights is uh, pride. And they always say, yeah, they are pride. <laughs> They're private there. Now, I'm not saying to be a, well, a doormat to people. I'm not saying to let people walk all over you, but here's the truth. The further we are from God, the more difficult it is to have good relationships. So I want to encourage you this year in all of your relationships, whether it's with your kids, your grandkids, your neighbor, to begin praying. One of our folks came to me this year and they told me about a situation with a neighbor. And I began to talk to them and I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start to pray for that neighbor. When the hurricane hit, that neighbor needed help. And guess who became friends again? 
God can do absolute miracles in your life, but you have to pray and you have to be humble and you can't be arrogant and you can't be mean to people. You have to say, God, would you make me humble and you work out this relationship and he can do amazing things in your marriage. He can do amazing things in your family if you'll let him. Luke chapter two, once again, glory to God in the highest and on earth, Peace to men whom his favor rests. Do you believe me that God wants to give you peace tonight? I want you to begin to pray. God, would you help me to walk in peace? If you're like me, you might have to say, God, would you help me to drive in peace? I grew up in Miami. We don't drive in peace. We drive in war, right? So I'm having to learn to drive in peace. Some of you were born Italian. You think it's your job to fight with everyone, right? And that's how you have a conversation. They're wrong, you're right, you're gonna tell them how. And so I wanna encourage you. God, would you make me an instrument of peace? Now in just a moment, we're gonna be lighting candles. And I want you to realize something. Jesus came to bring peace and he is the light of life. And so we're going to start lighting the candles from front to back. Now, I know for those of you in the back, it's going to take a minute. So if you have a lighter, please don't get your lighter out and get ahead of us. Allow the light to spread naturally because in this world, that's what happens. When you begin to pray and allow God to bring peace into your life, he will use you to bring that peace to other people. The Bible even says that you can show up in somebody's home and you can pray that God would bring peace to their home. Did you know that? So I want to encourage you as we light these candles tonight to think about the light of Christ and think about the peace that he brings. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this time tonight, Lord. I thank you for your peace. Lord, I thank you that even in struggle, even in trial, even when the world seems to be getting darker, you bring light. We thank you for the light that you bring. Father, thank you for this time where we can light candles and remember the precious gift of your son. Lord, I pray for each home represented here that you would bring peace. Father, I pray for that person here that's going through a, just a very difficult time. Even now, they feel like they're in pieces. Lord, I want to pray that you would surround them. Send Christians to surround them, to protect them, and to bring your peace, even in their darkness. We invite you to work in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Just play for a minute until they... Neil's going to lead us in a song in just a minute. encourage you right now where you are just to look at that candle maybe there's an area in your life where you have a problem or you know a friend who's struggling would you look at that candle would you just ask God to begin to bring light and to bring peace maybe you have a friend who's walking in darkness that you can just pray God would you bring light into their life maybe even now you would say God would you bring peace into my life from the pieces.
just take a moment to pray that prayer that God would fill your home with his peace. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son. Father, we thank you for the light that you've brought into our hearts and the peace. I pray this season, especially in this, in this world that's full of war and darkness, that we would be full of peace and love and light. In Jesus' name. Would you stand as we sing this song again? I invite you to bring peace to each heart, to each home represented here in Jesus' name. Amen. Two things real quick. You're not allowed to blow the candles out in here because the fire department doesn't want to visit us. So you'll have to blow them out outside or do that. But I can't recommend that because somebody got mad at me last year because they got burnt. Um, but before you leave, I want you to encourage you to turn around and wish happiness, Merry Christmas, and peace, or whatever you want to somebody around you before you go. God bless you and keep you. Merry Christmas. I'll be here tomorrow at 1030. Love you guys. God bless you.